left. Yes. All right. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, please be making your way in this morning. We're going to get started with our worship service very soon. We have a special service planned. Uh, we'll get started in just a few minutes. This close? Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty, all righty. Good morning. Thank you for everyone joining us this morning. Thank you for those uh, joining us online. Um, obviously, our, uh, our singers up here this morning look a little bit smaller than normal. Uh, tomorrow, we are celebrating as a, as a nation National Family Day. And so today you're going to be singing uh, all kinds of different generations uh, uh, represented this morning. Uh, so we're going to sing a song here. But before we do that, uh, let's go to God in prayer. Amen. God, Father, thank you so much for this morning, God. Thank you for um, your love, your grace, your kingdom, Father. And what an honor and a privilege it is to get together this morning uh, and worship together. Praise God to, to sing songs together. And God, being able to do that with our families, Father. Um, well, no matter what kind of family we have, Father, whether it was a family we chose, of friends and close people we love, Father, the families we were born in, God, uh, I know, God, that you have, you, you put us in every single one of those families for a reason, Father. I pray that whether we're being examples or we worship together, God, I pray that uh, we can lean on our family, God, in those ways and um, being able to uh, give thanks uh, to you, Father. Thank you again for this Sunday, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. We're going to sing Peace Like a River. Here we go. Ready, guys? Okay. Get close. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like the ocean. I've got I've got love like the ocean in my soul. I've got love like the ocean. I've got love like the ocean. I've got love like the ocean in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. You better be making those fountains. Joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy. Pack it up with a lot more singers. Give them a round of applause. Good morning. 
Um, we're going to get a little set up here. Our children's ministry wanted to share with you guys. We've been having some really uh, good times in children's ministry. I'm sure you guys have heard us in the back with the booming bass. And we wanted to um, include you guys in that too. So there are two songs that we're going to share with you. There is videos and there are dance moves. So if you could please dance your hearts out for these kids who are going to be dancing on stage, they would very much appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we're going to start with one called um, Wonderfully Made. There's a kangaroo, platypus, dingo, emu, koala up a tree. Wombat, numbat, cricket bat, red back, so many critters to see. Bandicoot, lorikeet, kookaburra, ha ha, brain coral living in the sea. Flying fox, there's a croc, clownfish, the most wonderfully made is me. Wonderfully made, I'm so wonderfully made. Different than a wombat. What a great God, I'm so wonderfully made. Different than a dingo. Oh, yeah. You know, we ain't just talking about another branch on the family tree. We're talking about a different tree. Uh, we're talking about trees. Thought we are talking about animals. Uh, animal trees. Just sing the song, mate. A bit faster this time. There's a kangaroo, platypus, dingo, emu, koala up a tree. Wombat, numbat, cricket bat, red back, so many critters to see. Bandicoot, lorikeet, kookaburra, ha ha, brain coral living in the sea. Blind fox, there's a croc, clownfish, the most wonderfully made is me. Wonderfully made, I'm so wonderfully made. Different than a wombat. What a great god, I'm so wonderfully made. Different than a dingo. Oh, yeah. We're made different. For example, have you ever heard a camel try and sing? No, but birds can sing. Fair point. Very repetitive lyrics, though. <laughs> Let's try it faster. There's a kangaroo, platypus, dingo, in you koala up a tree. Wombat, numbat, cricket bat, red back, so many critters to see. Bandicoot, lorikeet, kookaburra, ha ha, brain coral living in the sea. Blind fox, there's a rock, plough, fish, the most wonderfully made is me. Cause we're not 
So I will be reading Matthew 6.33, and it says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. <laughs> and now we're going to be singing Building Up the Kingdom. So uh, hopefully you're warmed up. If you're not warmed up, you didn't participate. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for helping us out. Um, so uh, as as was mentioned, I don't I don't want to block the kids over here. We have uh, we've we mentioned this before. We're having an issue with our lights, um, so that's why we're kind of over here on the side. If I come over here, then then I'm in the darkness. So, um, but uh, I can I can try to come over here. I don't know if this. Is that, is that any better? Okay, I got Vicky telling me, go that way, go that way. Um, so it is, tomorrow is National Family Day. So that's why we're, we're, we're celebrating that today. So today's a little different. I would like to think, you know, if you're like, is this how this church normally does things, if you're visiting with us today? I would like to think that we don't really, like, try to stick to a normal um, you know, we feel free. I, I was out of town last week. I, I want to bring you greetings from the Cornerstone Congregation in Atlanta. Um, so I, I got to visit with them. But um, I heard that last week was a little abnormal. And there were people like walking around and praying and kneeling and praying and, and laying on the floor and praying. Um, so, you know, good times, right? So, so today we're going to, like I said, we're going to do something a little different. But before we jump into that... Um, are Daniel and Priscilla Guidos, are they in here this morning? They didn't make it. Okay. Well, we will look forward to meeting them next Sunday. It's a family moving in from California, so we just wanted to welcome them. Um, I also want to let you know, many of you know Juan and Tina Rojas. 
Um, Juan was a student here at Vanderbilt for a long time. Uh, and they have been actually in China. He's been a missionary in China, met Tina over there. Um, they're going to be moving back. Uh, they're going to be moving here. And um, Juan has accepted a position at Lipscomb to be a professor at Lipscomb. Uh, Dylan's really excited. Maybe he'll take a class with him. And, um, but, but he just, you know, we want to let everybody know because, you know, many in church know and love, love him. And uh, also just that they're looking to kind of move back and they're kind of repatriating, right, from being missionaries in China. And so I just want to let the church know to be praying that they find a place to live, you know, uh, their children's school situation, cars. Like, you know, you come from halfway around the world and you're just starting over. And so uh, they have two smaller kids. And so just wanted to let the church know about that. Okay, what we're going to talk about today is the Shema. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my way back over here through the darkness. Um, okay, how many of you guys know what the Shema is? Can anybody, can anybody explain to us what the Shema is? That's okay. I didn't, I didn't expect. Let, let's, see, let's see out there. Does anybody, does anybody out here know what the Shema is? Okay. Roman, Roman right here led our prayer before service this morning, and he's about to jump out of his seat uh, to, uh, to tell us. So, hey, Roman, why don't you come on up here? And uh, why, don't, why don't you tell us uh, what the Shema is? Shema means to listen, heed, and do. Great. <laughs> Way to go. Good job. So, Shema is to listen, heed, and do. Uh, that's probably more than most of us in here were aware of, right? right? I know for those of you at home and for Ashlyn, we're trying to, to follow me on the camera. I want to say thank you to Ashlyn, and I'm sorry to Ashlyn because I'm, <laughs> I'm moving around over here. And uh, to, if, at home, if I keep walking out of the picture, I'm sorry as well. Uh, but thank you guys for joining us. Uh, okay, so, so the Shema... And any of the other kids that want to come up here, uh, come on up here. We're, we're just going to kind of, you know, do things a little differently here for a few minutes. So the Shema, as Roman said, to listen, heed, hear. And so we're going to watch a little video in just a second, not yet. Um, and what we're going to do first is we're just going to read the scripture um, that kind of begins the Shema. And I want you just to hear it and think about it. And I have two helpers here to read. So Richard is going to read Deuteronomy 6, and it's going to be up on the screen here. Deuteronomy 6 and verses 4 through 9. The Lord said to Moses, speak the, to the people of Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them while you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall blind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Excellent. Didn't Richard do a great job reading that? Thank you. So I hope that, that, you know, many of us are aware and familiar with the scripture. And in, in, in Jewish thinking, the scripture is incredibly important. I hope in Christian thinking, this scripture is incredibly important. But we're actually, do you guys, do you guys like the kids here up on stage? Do you guys like watching videos? I sure do. Yeah? You like watching videos? Okay. So why don't we watch a video tell us a little bit more about what the Shema is. You guys can see it right okay. For thousands of years, every morning and evening, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their devotion to God. They're called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. Now the first word of the Shema is hear or listen, which in Hebrew is pronounced Shema. That's where the prayer gets its name. Now, Shema is a really common word in the Hebrew Bible, and it's obvious why. Hearing is a very universal activity. It's usually connected with the ear, as in Proverbs chapter 20, ears that Shema and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. Now, that seems basic enough, but if you look at the other ways that Hebrew authors can use the word Shema, they use it to mean more than just let sound waves enter your ear. In Hebrew, Shema can also mean pay attention to or focus on. So when Leah, who wasn't loved by her husband Jacob, she has a son, and she names him Simon, or in Hebrew, Shimon, 
because, she says, the Lord has shamad, that I am unloved. So shema means to hear and to pay attention to, and even more. It can also mean responding to what you hear. This is why so many of the cries for help in the book of Psalms begin with a call that God listen. Psalm 27, verse 7. Shema my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful, answer me. So asking God to shema is at the same time asking God to act, to do something. It's similar to when God asks people to listen. Like when the people of Israel come to Mount Sinai, God says, if you shema me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations, you will be my treasured possession. Now there's a couple interesting things about this verse in Exodus. In Hebrew, the word shema is repeated twice in this sentence to give it emphasis. If you shema shema, meaning listen closely. But also notice that from God's point of view, listening is basically the same as keeping the covenant. So when God asks the people to Shema, what he means is that they listen and obey. And that's the last fascinating thing about Shema. In ancient Hebrew, there is no separate word for obey, meaning to carry out the wishes of someone who knows better than you or is in authority over you. So in the Bible, if you want to say, I will listen and do what you say, you use the single word Shema. In Hebrew, listening and doing are two sides of the same coin. This is why later in Israel's history, when the people were breaking their covenant promises to God, the Hebrew prophets would say things like, they have ears, but they're not listening. The Israelites, of course, could hear just fine, but they weren't actually listening or else they would act differently. And so in the end, listening in the Bible is about giving respect to the one speaking to you and doing what they say. Real listening takes effort and action, and that's the Hebrew word Shema. Okay, so did, uh, did you guys learn something about the Shema? Yeah. Okay, what about you guys? Did you guys learn? What, 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 what did you learn just now about the Shema? Um, that it means that you can listen. Oh. It means that you can... Um... <laughs> to let down and listen to God. To listen to God and let you have a good life. Um, it means for you to obey God. And like um, you have to obey because like of like. We have to obey because like, that's right. That's absolutely right. It means to listen. It means to listen. You guys did, you guys are amazing. You learned all that. If only our comprehension, right, were as good. Okay, we're, so, so the Shema is actually three scriptures. It's not just that scripture. So Miles is going to read the next scripture, um, and that's going to be um, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 13 through 21. You ready? You good? So if you faithfully ob obey the commands I am giving you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain new wine and olive oil. I will provide grass in the field of, for your cattle and I will eat and be satisfied. Be careful or, you're, or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Then the Lord's anger will burn against you and he will shut up the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will yield no produce. And you will soon perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write, the, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children 
may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. Great job, Miles. Way to go. So there, there's a lot of similarities there. The, obviously, the idea of listening to God's word and practicing God's word, and also some things to help us remember how to remember God's word, right? How to have it always on our mind. We're going to talk about that more in a second. But as I said, the Shema is three scriptures. Um, so we've read two. We're going to read the last one, which is Numbers 15, 37 through 41. And Richard is going to read that one for us. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the people of Israel and tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a cord of blue on the tassel of each corner. And it shall be a tassel for you to look and remember all the commandments of the Lord to do them, not to follow. After your own heart and your eyes, which you are inclined to war after, so you shall remember and do all the commandments and be holy to your God. And I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate it. Okay, so, so one of the things about these scriptures is these ideas of things to help us remember. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm a little confused, okay? Like in that scripture, it talked about, in this scripture right here, it says you will have tassels. It says throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. Can you help me figure out what that means? Okay. Did you have a question? Okay, let's figure out, does anybody know what tassels are? You, kind of like bones. So I think tassels are like things you find in the ground and they look like bones. Okay, tassels, um, okay. So, so that, that sounds a lot like fossils. Uh, it sounds a lot like it, right? That's why it's confusing sometimes. Um, so maybe, maybe on the next slide, I think, um, I think these are tassels. And so see, it's got the blue in it. And so it said that we're supposed to have tassels in our clothes. I think the next picture um, is of some examples of some of these, these tassels. Like, so, 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 so these people, they have these tassels on their clothes. Do you remember why they have the tassels on their clothes? Okay, Olivia, why? Okay, the, the, mic, the mic was too much. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so, so if we can go back to the scripture real quick. So it says, throughout the generations, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garments. You have these tassels to look at so you will remember all the commands of the Lord. So they would have these things on their clothes in order to remember. It's kind of like if you, if you wrap a string around your finger to not forget something. Maybe you've never heard of that. Some of us in the audience have heard of that. that so, so that's why they would put, the Jews would put these tassels in their clothes to remember to obey God's commands, to remember to Shema, right? To remember to listen to God's commands. Th there were some other things in here if we can go to the next uh, scripture. So it said, it said, write, write them, write the commands on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So how did, do you guys know how they wrote the commands on the door frames of their houses? This is what they do today. Do you have, do you have an idea? They use um, blood of a goat. The blood of a goat. Yeah, that's the Passover. And so those weren't the commands, but they used the blood of the goat when they wanted to come out of Egypt. Um, and so that's, that's a really good guess because it's connected, right? But actually, again, we can look at some pictures here. And so this is how today people who practice this, uh, Jews who practice this, this is how they, they have the commands in a little box and they put them on their door frames. You guys see those boxes on those doors? And so wh why do they do that? Okay. Olivia, your hand shot right up. It's because you, um, so like, uh, you have to remember what 
You're, uh, you're totally right. It's to remember. It's to remember. You're absolutely right. Jack, do you want to say something? Yeah. Um, when you may put boxes on the door, you need to blow it off. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> um, It's just always fun, right? Um, we're, we're, we're trying to, to figure this out all together. Okay, so, so it's to remember. It's like, it's like Olivia said, to remember. So these are things that the Jewish people do and have done in order to remember that God's commands are important. Okay, there's one last thing. We can look at the next slide. It says, tie them, tie the commands as symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead. So does this mean, guys, that I'm supposed to get my Bible and I'm supposed to tie it on my forehead? Is that, no? No? That's not what I'm supposed to do? Okay. I'm, I'm supposed to read it, right? That's really smart. That's really awesome. Okay. But now, now, again, I got one more picture. And this is a Jewish boy who is trying to put this into practice. So what, see that little box on top of his head? That they have the commands in that box. And so he will, if when he, when he wants to go to church, when he wants to pray, he, he ties that to his head so it can be on his head. And then that little box on his arm, that's also the commands, and he ties it around his arm. And so th that's how, throughout the centuries, Jews have tried to put these things into practice. But again, why do they do this? It's to remember, right? It's to remember. It's to remember that, hey, this is important, and I want to be um, obedient. I want to shema. God's commands. Okay, so I have, I have one more question here. If we can go to the next slide. So it also says, these commandments I give you today are to be on your hearts and press them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols. And then he goes on and talks about, you know, what we just read about tying them onto their bodies. Okay, let's look at the next slide. This is very similar. And this is over in Deuteronomy 11. Teach them to your children. So, so God is telling them, not just learn them yourself, but teach them to your children. Talking about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. As many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. So... Both these scriptures talk about that it's a parent's responsibility to teach these things to our children. And we do that by talking about them as we lay down, as we get up, as we walk along the road. We put them on our door frames. We put them on our foreheads. We put them on our arms. We put them as tassels. But it's the parent's responsibility to do it. So I was just wondering if it's your parent's responsibility to, to teach you about God's commands. What are ways that you feel like would be helpful for your parents? Like, what ways would you guys like your parents to help you to learn about God's commands? Read the Bible. Okay. That you want your parents to read you the Bible. Excellent. Focus. What do you mean by focus? Um, like, focus to your parents, teachers, when they're talking about something important. Okay, so, so you're saying that you guys can focus when your parents are trying to talk to you about God and his commandments. That's great. That's excellent. Um, teach us to tie shoes. Excellent. Teach us to tie shoes. We need, we need practical, everyday um, help here. Um, we, uh, um, we have to, like, practice to do something if we don't know how to do it. We have, to, we have to practice. Maybe our parents have to show us how to do it, right? They have to show us how to live the Bible. That's really deep. I'm going to, you know, elaborate on that a little bit for Olive because that's what she meant. Um, when, when they do that, that's a good, when they step in when they do that, when they don't, when they, when they put it on the door, everything happens. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. You, you want to share something? To pray to God when we need him. To pray to God when we need him. 
So you want you, so pray to God when we need him. So you're saying you want your parents to teach you to pray to God when we need him. Amen. 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 I mean, again, awesome, right? Super, super encouraging. Um, you know, I know this isn't, uh, you know, a, a deep theological. We haven't, you know, uh, looked at, at the, the Hebrew words or anything like that. But I think we've gotten a lot more today, right, than we, than we otherwise would have. Um, I, uh, I've, I've been reading this book, uh, Letting Them Go. I don't mean to embarrass my daughter, but she's a senior in high school, and she's getting ready to uh, go off to college. And so actually, Jim dies. Jim, thank you. Recommended this book. That's called Letting Them Go. Dave Bierman. Uh, just on kind of preparing to kind of send your kids out of the house, right? Um, and so one of the things that he says in this uh, is, if we can put that the slide up with the, the quote there. He says, remember this important principle. We model values and we teach skills. Funny enough, he talks about tying shoes. Um, uh, and Lily didn't know that, but... Um, so we, we, we model values, we teach skills. Actually, we cannot not model values. People, especially those who live with us, our children, right, learn what we value by watching us. We show how much we value something, how important it is to us by how we invest our time, money, and emotion. And here's a disturbing truth. Your children will catch your values. Your values. Not what you want them to value, but your values. Our children catch our values. We, we model what we value. And so these scriptures are telling us, hey, if we want our kids to value God's word, we've got to model it. Amen. And it's just got to be who we are and what we do as we walk along the road, as we get up, as we lay down. We're not suggesting that we're going to start, you know, uh, walking around with tassels or, you know, with, uh, with the scriptures, you know, on our foreheads. But it's, it's got to be something that's in our hearts. And so the, the Shema is such an amazing concept in this sense and, and such an amazing part of who we want to be as a family. And I think in our society, it's so easy to go to church on Sunday and think that's enough and not realize that our kids are watching us Monday through Saturday and that, that we're going to teach them what we value by, by how we spend our time and our focus and our energy, and we just have to ask ourselves. Now, the other thing is, we are a village. It takes a village to raise children. Yeah. So this is not just, oh, well, I'm not a parent, so this doesn't apply to me. This totally applies to you. We are all in this together. We all together are trying to model our values to anybody who will listen, to anybody who will watch, which means we have to do it. We have to live it. We have to walk it. And, and the more we do that together, the more it is obvious, the more it is seen, the more it's clear, the more it impacts the people around us and the people that we most want to influence. So let's just remember that the Shema is not just, uh, it's not just some scriptures that are chanted. It's a concept that we want to model our values. And so what I would like us to do is I'd like us all to stand, and you guys can stand too. Um, and like, I'd like to go to the last slide. And together, I'd like us just to do the beginning of the Shema. If any of you want to do this in Hebrew, go for it. <laughs> we can, we can uh, you know, grab you a mic. Uh, but the rest of us will do this in English. So if you guys can see it up there or if you want to turn around and see it there, we're just going we're gonna to just say this all together, okay? So on three, one, two, three. Hear, o, hear o Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Amen. So you can go ahead and have a seat, and next we're going to have um, Olivia Wynn and Linda Miller um, lead us in, in some prayers representing different generations here. Amen. Test, test. Oh. 
Hi, my name's Olivia. And oh, my name is Linda. <laughs> uh, we'll be talking about like the different generations in the church. Um, I'm part of the middle school. And I'm part of the pay setter ministry. So, um, what's one thing that you've always loved about the church? What first drew me to the church were the array of people, just the different people, and I liked that. Everybody didn't look like me from how I grew up, and I was drawn to that. Cool. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what to say. Uh, I'll ask you a question. Uh, okay, yeah. What do you like most about middle school, Olivia? Probably, uh, also just, like, the people are awesome. Um, I mean, we talk about some cool stuff from the Bible, and it just, it's cool. Mm -hmm. I like it. Talk about that at school. I'm, I'm impressed. That's awesome. So, um, at school, we have chapel, um. Where we all gather as a school and we talk about God and it somehow, it sometimes relates to what we learn about in church, which is really cool. So where do you go to school? See, I don't even know that. Tell me where you go to school. I go to FRA. Okay, no wonder. Hey, man, that's good. Okay. Um, Ask me something. <laughs> okay. How about relationships okay. that I have at church? I have a lot of wonderful relationships, uh, older, some younger. And so I appreciate that. It kind of keeps me on track. Uh, we can just help each other. And I'm grateful that I am loved unconditionally because I mess up a lot sometimes. And I have someone there to back me up and I'm so grateful for that. Who would you cons consider your partner in crime? Uh. <laughs> I mean, I got, oh, mercy. That's really put me on the spot. I got quite a few people. Uh, yeah, okay. Mary Ann. Mary Ann's my partner in crime. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> because we go places together. Wait a minute. All right. I'll get her to go with me. Because now at this age, 69. End of, the, end of my 60s. And I'm, it's kind of scary, but it's that Marianne will go with me, and I appreciate that. Uh, let me see. I wanted to ask you, in your school, now that I know the school you go to, how are, do you have many friends? Oh, uh, yeah. I have friends. They're really supportive. Okay. Um, they're interesting. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Let's just say our friend group is different than some other friend groups. They're not cool, too cool for school. They're just... Do you think I'm cool? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to be, I, like, I don't really know what the definition of cool is here. <laughs> good answer. Okay, very I mean, good. Some people consider gangsters cool, and some people consider the, uh, Christian's cool, mm -hmm. and um, I think you're cool like oh. that. Oh. Just cool in general. Okay. okay, well, I guess we can wind it down. Match, we start winding it down. I really appreciate you being with me, and I was so excited to find out you were going to be sitting up here with me. I think you're just an awesome young lady, and I want to get to know you better. We were in Kingdom Kids for a while, so I want to get to know you better. So you want to pray, you want me to pray first? Uh, you pray first. Oh, thank you. Most holy God, amazing Father, Abba. God, you are our Elohim. You are the creator. Father, we are the pinnacle of your creation. When you created us, you said it was very good. And we thank you for that. Let us not ever forget how much you love us. And that's the things I'm learning as I study deeper. God, we just want to come thanking you for today. The weather that you gave us today, we pray that the rain will hold up a little bit. 
thank you for families, God. Thank you for uh, just the blessings of that. I want to pray for those that are sick. We have so many sick people. We have people that are bereaved. God, you know every heart. You know every heart that cries out to you, Father. Let us never stop doing that, whether we do it on our knees with our hands raised or flat out. Always pray to you and know where we get uh, all our goodness comes from you. I thank you so much for Jesus, Father, and it's in his name that we pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for us able to gather in this church. And thank you for what a wonderful church this is, full of so many wonderful people. And I pray that we can connect with them all, either young or older or like middle-aged. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just pray that we can connect with you, God. Amen. 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 See, that was in good company. <laughs> Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Webb Pierce. This is my beautiful, intelligent wife, Lee, and my adorable baby, Larry Grace. She's, she's almost six months now, so. First, I uh, just want to talk about how thankful I am to have the brothers and sisters here. I've been a part of this church officially about November 11, 2012. And I've gotten to meet a lot of different people who have helped shape my character. A lot of people have held me accountable. Some of those people aren't here either because they passed away or they fell away or they've stayed strong, committed, and they're here or they moved elsewhere to help um, lead or do other kinds of things. Um, we're going we're gonna to have a little message here for communion uh, today. But first off, if anybody needs a cup, just raise your hand. We have some ushers that can come and help you. And while you're doing that, if you could please uh, turn your Bibles or your Bible apps to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 17. All right. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Now, when you hear that, I don't know if anyone of y'all feel like, okay, all my problems went away. I'm a perfect Christian now. I'm a new creation. Um, but this is just the beginning. We still live in the same world with the same temptations. We have the same physical body and needs. And so we can't do it alone. That's why it's very important that we should be thankful for and have people in our lives that can help shape us and just help call us out and help us to continue to move forward spiritually as God intends us because he, expect, he desires so much for us, so much greater things that if we just leave it up to our own devices, we'll never meet up to where he truly wants us to be and become the people he wants us to become. Um, so also, I'm very thankful for my family here because my wife being a disciple also helps me to see the things I need to grow in um, daily as well as my baby because I need to grow in patience and she shows me where I'm at daily. But this is okay. <laughs> but speaking of family and thankfulness, my wife would like to share a few things. Hi, family. It's good to be here to see you all, to talk to you all. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about my story. Uh, my parents divorced when I was 12, and for the next six years of my life, my father was ripped out of my life. And that's when I remember first feeling that hole in myself and this desire to fill it. I wanted love. I wanted deep, committed love. And in my ignorance, I thought that I could find that with another person. I dated a lot. I did not observe chaste boundaries. <laughs> um, I did a lot of things that I'm not, not proud of. Um, but in all of that, I became very anti-God. And in that, I made a lot of bad choices, but God never <coughs> gave up on me. I said I wasn't going to do that. 
So um, God worked on my heart. He softened it enough so that when Erica McGee asked me to come here, sorry, I just had a baby, so emotions are crazy. <laughs> uh, when she asked me to study the Bible, I said yes. And when she asked me to come here, I said yes. And I knew pretty immediately that I needed to be baptized. And so I proclaimed that Jesus is Lord, and I got in that water. And y'all, let me tell you, Jesus is awesome, and Jesus will give you every desire of your heart. Uh, he brought Webb, newly single, to my family group one night. And we were engaged later that year and married the next spring. And then in April of this year, he gave me this beauty. And throughout all of that, I've had my small group. I've had a lot of people here who have helped me. We've had the McGee's who've been so wonderful. We've had the Bratchers who've been great leaders. We've had the young Blunt Bratchers who we recently have gotten to know. And the Prices who we are very, very, very grateful to. We've got the men's, who usually sit over here but aren't here right now. <laughs> and recently we have the Pinedas, and we're so glad to get to know you more. Um, I can't say that God will give you the same blessings that he has given me, but I can tell you that if you make Jesus Lord of your life, he will bless you, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And so I will end with scripture. Psalm 20, verses 4 through 6. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation. And in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now, I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Now let's remember during communion that if it wasn't for Jesus giving up his body and blood for us, we wouldn't have a relationship with God in our lives, nor the family that we have before us today. And I want to pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for bringing our brothers and sisters here together today. Thank you for the new generations that you bring forth. Please help us to guide them and help us all to be obedient to your word. Help us to do the things that you set out and planned for us to do with our lives so that we can have lives just full of happiness and full of achieving the things that you set out for us um, so that we can be bigger than what we think we are for your glory. And let us not take for granted all that Jesus did for us by sacrificing himself so that we could grow closer to you and be with you forever. And I just want to thank you and I want to pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Well, church, we're going to continue on with our service. I'm Adriana Brown. This is Troy McDonald. We're going to have a special time. Um, thank you for the few claps. <laughs> We're going to have a little interview here with Troy and just get to know a little bit. He's a very faithful brother in the church here, and we're going to get to, to know a little bit about his story and his love for family, his family, and for his church family. So, um, Troy, I want to start. My first question is just if you could tell us a little bit about the story of your family coming together. I know that there has been heartache and sadness um, in life. It's not family doesn't always go perfect. So if you could just tell us the story of how your family came to be. And we have a beautiful picture, I think, to show. Yeah, we, uh, we, I'm very lucky. I mean, that's a pretty amazing view. Am I, just keep it up. Me? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm very lucky. I got a great group of wonderful, wonderful people um, that I love very much. Um, yeah, we had uh, we had some heartache. We uh, um, we came to the church um, in '96, uh, Peyton and Bridget and I, and uh, it was um, it, we learned and we grew. And uh, you know, when we came, we, we our life was a mess. So we got to we had people that were in there that helped us to grow up and, and become mature and uh, and grow into a great marriage. And then. You know, 21 years into that marriage, um, Bridget got an infection and she passed away. Um, and that was tough. Um, uh, that was the hardest thing by far I've ever had to deal with. Um, but um, God is, is amazing. Um, he takes us wherever we are, uh, heals us, builds us up. Um, and then he brought in a new family. <laughs> uh, I've met Casey. Um, and Madison, Daniel, of course, we've known each other for years. Um, they were in the church, and uh, God brought us together, a new family. And uh, that's been incredible. It's been, uh, uh, you know, when you, when you go through tragedy, you think to yourself, you know, a lot of times in the midst of that, you don't think there's a future left. Uh, so not true with God. <laughs> God will... <laughs> will blow your mind with the things that he can uh, accomplish um, if we're just willing to, to, to love him and, and be used by him. Um, and he, he did that. He brought Casey. Um, we have learned and grown, you know, the, the 21 years of marriage that I had before that, um, you would think prepares for, will prepare you. Uh, but it's, it's different. It's, uh, uh, there are a lot of different things that uh, I've had to learn and grow through. And so God has, uh, again, been patient with me. Casey's been patient with me. Madison and Daniel, uh, the, you know, as you grow again, you take that next step. Um, you just get to see God unfold miracles all over again. And that's what I think my family is. It's, it's a miracle. Um, Amen. 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 Well, I know you were telling me this morning that you've been around the GNC church, in the GNC church for 27, 26, 27 years. So what is your favorite thing about our fun, crazy family here in Nashville in your small group or in the church? What are some of your favorite things? I love our small group. Um, we have the, the best group of people, um, um, just amazing friends, um, a very mature group um, in terms of not just, well, now chronologically we're mature, but, um, but spiritually mature. Um, the, the fun thing is uh, we get together and uh, it's sometimes it's just like family I and mean, you've got to kind of pull us back in, kind of rein us back in again so we can, you know, have our lesson and, and uh, you know, be about, you know, the things that we need to be about as disciples. So um, it's so much fun. Just a great, uh, great time every time we get together. Um, people that, that uh, I think we all feel comfortable just sharing our life you know, being open, um, receiving um, encouragement, correction, and, you know, I don't think we've had any rebuke time, so it's, you know, it's just been, a, you know, that's kind of the surreal part of a, a, a spiritual family, you know, they just, you know, it's just been great, so, and as far as the, the overall, every time I get up here, I'm just, 
can't say enough about how much fun it is to be up here looking out there because I see people that for 26 years uh, I've had relationships with. And I don't know if all of you realize it or not, but I walk into this, uh, into this church and I see faces and it just, it's pure joy. Absolute joy. I mean, I, uh, the Lesters were, I mean, they were early, early on as disciples. Darlene kept faith. She's three years old. Um, we've lived with, with them as our family for for that long. I look at the Reeves. You know, Priestley and I knew one another before I was a disciple. Um, and I could go around the room. Sonny Sharp was one of those guys early on that really kind of helped to form my thinking about a lot of things. Um, but he gave me some of the, the wisest information about grace and, and loving one another um, that I'm that I still carry them with me today. And I could go right just from one end to the other and just be, um, just tell you stories of, of times that we've got to just sit together and in some cases laugh together and in some cases cry together, um, but just be a family. Uh, this is a huge family for me and I'm grateful for, for everybody here. <laughs> well, thank you for your example. You're a very faithful brother, faithful to God and faithful to God's family. So thanks for your example. Amen. Together. 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 Together, we mobilize volunteers. Together, we respond to disasters. Together, we empower communities. Together, together, we inspire greater hope. everybody. Um, I am obviously a brand new face and if there's still children out there I probably sound like Peppa Pig as well. Um, but my name is Lisa Wilder Baker and I work for Hope Worldwide in Atlanta and I have come to visit you all. <laughs> um, I first want to thank both sets of Browns uh, <laughs> for uh, allowing me just a few minutes to talk to you all, to share some good news with you all, um, so that you can know. I feel like this mic is like right in the center of my face, is it? All right. <laughs> um, just to share with you all, it's, as we come to the close of the year, it's really important to us. I work on the development team. Um, I accidentally, accidentally sent the wrong slide. So that has Russ Hargrove, who's my boss. It should have Lisa Wilder Baker. So just like pretend that's what's there. Um, but uh, this is the time of year that we really like to get out and, and visit with our brothers and sisters in the churches all over the country to thank you for your support. Um, that's really, you know, it's, I know that here in Nashville, you guys have a phenomenal hope chapter. We hear about you. We talk about you. It's like good news in the office. Um, it's funny, I drove in from Atlanta yesterday and I'm English, so I, if I've got the meaning of this wrong, I apologize. But as I drove in, you know, they've got like, welcome to Tennessee, right? And it said, the volunteer state. Is that right? And I was like, well, clearly I chose the best congregation to visit. <laughs> That's amazing. I know Virginia's for lovers and Georgia's the peach state, but I was like, the volunteers? That's pretty like hardcore. Good for you guys. That's fantastic. Um, and that says a lot about um, your chapter here and all the work that you're doing. So first I wanted to um, just thank you all for the way that you support, um, not just Hope Worldwide, but the way you support your local community. 
because that's what we're about and um, that's what's really important. So the goal um, is for us to imitate Jesus and build community. That's what we are about in Hope Worldwide. While we have programs spread all over the globe, and that's very exciting, and I'm going to share some good news, um, I think your immediate community is often where we see the most impact. Not just in your surroundings, but in yourself. You know, it, it means a lot to be able to impact those that you see every day, your neighbors, your school friends, or just your immediate needs in your community. So, a couple of things. We can go to the next slide. And that was kind of, we can go to the next one after that. There we go. All right. So, a couple of things to share. Volunteer mobilization. Um, that, again, goes back to a lot of the work that you're doing with your local chapter. Um, but disaster response in Ukraine, and we all, you know, that's close to all of our hearts. We know there's been a lot going on, um, and it's been a really difficult situation. I know for me personally, it was thinking about my normal life that I live day to day right now, and just like that, it was uprooted and changed. And sometimes it can be easy to see people that materially are in need, that we see on TV, and say, oh yeah, that, that person is going through a time of need, and the, that's kind of the culture of where they're at. But with this situation, it was a lot of times people like you and I, that lives were suddenly thrown into turmoil. So um, through the support of Hope Worldwide, we have been able to do some incredible things. 250,000 meals were served. Yeah, it's, that's a lot of meals and a lot of help. Um, 1,500 refugees were placed in homes. And I will let you know, a lot of your brothers and sisters in the churches in Turkey and surrounding areas, they took strangers in. They took brothers and sisters in. They took just 1,500 people who we were able to help get out of an unsafe situation and place them in homes and then, you know, start the process to moving them into a more permanently um, you know, in a better position. So thank you, because everything that you guys have done, anyone who has given to the help in Ukraine, that is what you've helped. Um, and lastly, um, part of what we do in development is, de is partner with corporations and other op opportunities to grow. And we were able to secure $30 million in medical supplies. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. And that went for, um, you know, medicine and trauma relief, because um, as you can imagine, you, you're talking about just hundreds of thousands of people that um, are in need of food and shelter, but also medical supplies and also the opportunity to have counselling and care in the face of trauma. Um, we can go to the next slide. Actually, I can talk about community development a bit. Oh, good news. We were also opened, opened our new Tijuana Centre of Hope that just recently opened, which is fantastic. It is serving orphans and vulnerable children and their families. Um, and we're working alongside the communities there to see that program develop and to open that home. So, you know, it's not just, you know, about going into an area and saying, hey, we've got our red cape on and we've come to do all the things, but it's really involving and embracing that community so that they're all involved and everybody is helping um, each other in these times of need and especially the young and the vulnerable within communities. Um, it takes the village, it takes everybody to get involved and see these things change. So lastly, Full engagement, that's what we're all about. You guys are always already doing a fantastic job. Like I said, you're the volunteer state, so who am I talking to? Um, but right now this year, we've been really focused on having full engagement and what that looks like. And it's really to not only participate through volunteering and your time and talent, not only donating, which is great, and to advocate in prayer and petition, but that all of that together means that you're not only fully engaged, but you're fully transformed. That your engagement is transforming and that you too receive transformation in that engagement. And that's really the goal um, that we're working towards at Hope Worldwide as we train volunteers, as we speak to um, organizations, corporations, churches, communities about how to be fully engaged. This is kind of the story. This is what we're looking to see um, to empower each person to get that out of their, their volunteering with Hope Worldwide or just in your community in general. This is, it should be a transformative experience. So thank you so much for allowing me just a few minutes to take up 
um, in your wonderful family service. I couldn't think of a better service to have come to be a part of. Um, this has been wonderful, and I thank you all so much. If you have any questions, I'll be around right after, and um, would love to meet any and all of you. So thank you so much. Thank y'all. Uh, we are the Landrums. Uh, good morning, church. Um, my name is Dedrick Landrum, and uh, my better half uh, is Michelle Landrum. Probably should say uh, better three-fourths, right? Um, I just want to say that um, I'm really honored um, to be able to give the announcements this morning. And I want to say that um, I'm really thankful because after watching, I know my sister talked about this being a volunteer state, but if you watched the UT game yesterday, um, probably almost had a heart attack watching that game because they, they about gave it away. Um, but I want to give the announcements this morning. And, and before that, I want to also give a kudos to all the sisters, you know who you are that travel with, um, Robin, um, to go to Huntsville yesterday. Uh, give the women kudos uh, in, in traveling in big, big bunches down there to support her. Um, but the first announcement today for church is um, we're currently in the month of uh, prayer and fasting. And so if you haven't signed up yet um, for the spot on the prayer chain, uh, please sign up. You can do that through the app, the church app, if you don't have that. Uh, please download the app. And if you're a little lazy like me, um, you can also right now scan the, um, the QR code and it will actually allow you to sign up that way. Uh, I told my wife I wouldn't be long-winded, so she's keeping me on schedule here. Um, also, uh, next weekend, we should really get excited about, um, there's a gentleman I read about him, Guy Hammond. Guy Hammond is gonna be here. He'll be here next weekend. Uh, the festivities will start on Friday at 7.30, and then he'll also do a session on Saturday from 10 to 1. And then he will also speak during church on Sunday, and there will be a lunch question and answer after service. The thing about Guy Hammond, with the culture that we live in today, uh, he is such a blessing and has a great testimony. Um, the stuff that he will talk about, I think, will be very helpful, not only to us as adults, but to our children and to young adults. So I think you should really uh, make sure that you're there. Um, oh, my wife reminded me. There's a movie on the app that you should watch. It's called Finding Guy, and I think it's all about him. So if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, Guy Hammond and his testimony and his story, please go to the, that's a, a better reason to make sure you download the church app. Um, also, bittersweet, uh, Johnny and Caitlin Grant, where are you at? They're right there. Uh, sad situation, but joyous for them. This week is their last Sunday with us. Um, they are leaving to move to St. Louis. Uh, but in the spirit of celebration, uh, we want to celebrate them after church, so there will be a um, a gathering after church in the fellowship hall um, to really celebrate them. And um, I wouldn't say send them on their way because it's sad, but really to really just to celebrate them because they are, have been a big part of uh, church and everything. Then also, we have a lot going on. We, we like to do that. 
here at Greater Nashville uh, Church, which is really good to have people, because the, the, the greater things, we have to all be involved and fellowshipping with one another. So the service today, was it not great with the kids and, and family? So in the spirit of that, we want to have a pic, we're going to have a picnic after church. Everyone is invited. Uh, the key thing to know is if you have to bring your own food because that won't be provided. So if you're like me, you didn't pack anything, go and grab something and bring it back. But if you did plan, you know, and, and did it the right way, then um, we'll meet weather permitting. I think the weather, God has held the weather. Uh, we're going to actually meet outside, bring blankets. And if the weather does not want to cooperate, then we'll actually just kind of fellowship and, and everything like that. So those are the announcements. Um, let, us, let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for all that you're doing in our church. Thank you so much for uh, the service today. Thank you for the kids. Thank you for all the families represented. Um, Lord, you, you know our hearts is to serve you. And Lord, though we're not perfect, uh, we are here. And we just, we really just thank everyone that was involved today. Uh, Lord, we pray for our uh, all the ministries here, uh, from the young all the way up to the pay setters. Lord, we're so grateful for all that you do. Lord, you are wonderful. You are awesome. Lord, I just thank you so much, and I ask all these prayers in your son Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>